Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the series strategy game, and we're returning to our Hearts of Iron Let's Play of uh, Kaiserreich, the mod where we are playing as the Princely Federation in a hypothetical alternative universe uh, where Germany, the German Empire, did win World War One, and we're ooh, that's new. Um, <laughs> and we are playing as uh, India, hoping, of course, to reunite India um, from. Our point of view as the Princely Federation against both the sort of communists over here and the uh, still colonial power in our north. We've just finished our national focus over here where we are building up a little bit more infrastructure. That is pretty good. So what do we want to do next? More infrastructure or economic reforms that would give us a little bit of a boost towards industrial research. We are nearing 19 37 so that would actually be kind of nice to get an early boost here um, but on the other hand I mean it's 70 days so yeah you know what let's do this right we're gonna do this we're gonna get an event very soon here um, where we are we can read this uh, do pause the game uh, basically we are getting a little bit of political power for finishing that and uh, that would allow us to add a head of military intelligence I'm still eyeing with this guy, although it will take 500 days uh, for him to repay uh, the investments. A little bit over a year, and I'm not sure that is really that useful. Decryption, encryption, um, I don't think we're going to do that at the moment. Uh, we're going to save on our political power over here for a little while. It's, ni it's nice to get the infrastructure. Uh, the most important bit here is to get to seek foreign uh, investment simply so that the factory output modifier does go away. Ultimately, we do want to go down here and, of course, get these military industries over there. Let's uh, take a second to review world events over here before we... Yeah, we do need both of these, so... Yeah, that's fine. Indochina declares independence from what? From what, actually? Germany seized French Indochina. Okay, so... Yeah, we've got the Indo-Chinese Union down here, and they are probably in war against German East Asia, so interesting war there. We also got the war, of course, between the Australian Union uh, and the sort of Entente, which are the most democratic countries. It's Canada, it's New Zealand, who else actually? I wonder. So Canada, French Republic, of course, so only North Africa, not France itself. France itself has fallen towards uh, communism. Or syndicalism as it's known in this uh, game version over here let's invest you over there I think that's fine but we do want to get the infantry equipment running very very soon so uh, in about 30 days we are gonna switch over to the production of new infantry equipment we are very 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 strongly lacking infantry equipment we have we are 20,000 short and we have been not producing infantry equipment for going on to a year over here, which might be a horrible, horrible mistake, uh, but you, you know what? We, we're gonna have to see the hard way, probably. Right. Everyone else is fine, though. Some war starting on the um, Arabian Peninsula. Nothing too drastic. I don't think this war here is overly hot. But yeah, into China. Very much pushing into Germany, East Asia over here. Interesting development. No other war that I know of. No, of course, Afghanistan and the Dominion of India are fighting. And I do think... It looks even a little bit like Afghanistan is gaining some some position over here. Whether or not that is enough, I don't know. Could do a police crackdown, increase our stability a little bit. It's pretty bad. But all in all, I don't think that's required. Do need a little bit more... So I think so. Oh, yeah, we actually have over 100. So, yeah, let's go for early mobilization. Away from civilian economy. That does allow us to build up our military factories a little bit faster, basically, and have more civilian factories doing that. So, no. Actually, ah, we didn't get any benefit there. Well, that's disappointing. Anyway. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we've got new infantry equipment, so let's do produce that. Um, I think we want to produce at least 15 or use use pretty much all of our factories uh, for that if we can. So yeah, let's actually delete these production lines, put everything into into uh, infantry equipment that we've got. 
um, and that should be okay. We are producing only six per day uh, and we need 20,000. Of course, that's going to accelerate as our production efficiency grows, um, but it's going to grow way too slowly. Right, it is 1936, so I guess we should do the mechanical computing. It's going to take a long while, but it's a 4% research boost, so I think that's a good choice. Concentrated industry over here. We are researching land doctrine, so we are blocked from that. Could do interwar artillery. It's not a huge thing to do, um, but it's certainly going to be a little bit useful. How long until we get the... Uh, it's only about 14 days. Okay, let's wait 14 days. I think you are, I think you do accumulate a little bit of research time here, yeah, up to 30 days, so that's fine. So yeah, we can wait that for that to match up, because this does uh, give us a boost for industry. We're not quite in 1937, but at least uh, we might uh, have the choice to do that there. Sequon investment does require uh, that the railroad reaches my source, so that is probably something that we're going to do right after we finish with the new economic reforms. We are very much focused on the economic branch over here. Um, soon I think we might th start to think about the military branch as well. Let's go for this. There we go. Uh, military branch does uh, have a difference here between these two, and let's talk about that uh, as time goes by a little bit later on. So yeah, we could do this. And honestly, I think it wouldn't be the worst idea. So specifically concentrated industry 2. It's only 82, uh, 84 days. There is a research penalty for being ahead of time. But it's not that substantial. So you know what? Let's actually, actually research that. And go back to talking about the difference between those two. So this is a little bit more centralized structure. This is a little bit more federal structure. Both of them share the ability to access these two points, so that's not a difference. This here does give us a research bonus for infantry weapons, as does this here, so there's no difference in these. The only difference really comes from these middle branches. And here you can already see this is a little bit more tank, armored, mechanized focus. This here is a little bit more motorized, so that's similar I think. Two for motorized, one for motorized. Yeah, one for motorized, one for tanks. But, on the other hand, this here does give us a benefit for cavalry, which I find amazing. Um, support technology, which I find okay, but very importantly for land doctrine. So I think our route is going to be this one, and that's going to be uh, pretty fantastic. And I completely forgot what we actually researched over here. Doesn't matter that much. It's, oh, it is land battle plan, so that's interesting. We could likewise go for this one, 70 days, but what would it give us? It would give us a higher production efficiency cap. Now, if we do look at what we are producing, we are very far away from the cap. So I don't actually think that's that's valuable for us at this moment. Unless, of course, the increase uh, is sort of proportional to that. Interwar artillery is still relevant. This is all 1938. I'm kind of tempted to do this. It is 1936, but probably not the highest priority right now. So what we probably want to do then, max planning, is actually go ahead a little bit more towards here. Because this here would be nice to get more organization on all of our infantry. These things do take an enormous amount of off time. And again, I don't think the research uh, or the production efficiency cap is that useful for us right now. Right. Also, I'm still sort of debating internally where we want to go with our political branch over here. Do we want to go a little bit more centralized? Do we want to go for an empire um, or sort of a benevolent father of the federation approach? Or do we want to go more democratic and go for a new federation? I'm really, really on the fence which, which of these lines we should go down to. So do let me know in the comments what you think. Should we be going for an empire? Should we be going for for sort of a situation um, that's similar to an empire, but not quite. Um, or do we want to go for fully democratic um, reforms? Right. Temporary reforms, that's nice. That does give us a little bit more. Um, over there, the US is electing another president. Interesting. Hasn't um, descended into chaos yet. 
Ooh, and look at that. So the Germans apparently, I think, did some landings around here uh, in southern uh, Vietnam, more southern Indochina, French Indochina, German Indochina, I don't know. Russia is still in civil war. I've got one area over here. I've got the Soviets uh, around the industrial heartland. Not sure what's really gonna happen there. We are getting a little bit more political power and I'm wondering what should be our next move. So getting these two guys down here would be helpful. Industrial concern would of course be nice, but I'm not sure whether we are going to really be able to go there. And of course, maybe do something like this. Encryption. Do we have decryption? Yeah, we do. And research speed. This would actually not be too bad. You know what? Let's go for that. A little bit more research time, a little bit more decryption would be nice also that maybe we can see what these guys are working on. Oh yes, that's great to see. So they have established these, this command. They are seeking help from France, giving some benefit to them. They haven't really gone for the final showdown yet as far as we can tell. So they are not really preparing for war yet. They're expanding the army, but again, they are not preparing for the final struggle. So that's that's really great to know. Ooh, Kingdom of Poland has allied with Germany. Interesting development, um, not really to be expected, but interesting to see. Ooh, unassigned divisions, uh, that's nice. So the first of our divisions do get online here. You're certainly going to be part of this, um, and I would actually, of course, like that to be the case for all of you. Right, there we go. So we are retraining a couple of our divisions because, well, most of our divisions are pretty green over here. Um, and that's not really what we want to do. So, you know what? We can actually disband more of these guys and continue the training of these guys over here. So they should get a little bit more equipment. Yep. And that's fine. How are, the, how do we, how are we looking in terms of production? Producing a little bit more, 13 per day. Still need 15,000, so this is still a job for three years or so. Um, but of course, this is going to accelerate as time goes by. Specifically and most importantly, by expanding our military industry down here. So that's why we are racing down this uh, track. I think this is also going to be extremely helpful because it does get rid of one of these very bad modifiers. How's Russia doing? I think, I think they are pushing back um, against the... Soviets up here. Oop. More political power, always appreciated. Nothing that we can do with that right now. How do you look in terms of research? 10 days for concentrated industry, that's always appreciated. You are expanding the navy, interestingly enough. Are you pushing pushing into Russia into the Soviet's territory or not? It's really, it's winter now, so winter winter warfare in Russia is pretty much frozen. Of course, for us, it's not quite as important. Tibet in war against one of these Chinese puppets. This war is still happening over there, which is good. As long as these guys are uh, having warfare over there, it doesn't really affect us too much. Proof machinery tools is a very nice research. It is 1937, so let's briefly check what we want to do in 1937. This is still missing. This is still fine. We do definitely need to get radio, but it's fine if we do get that just, just before the war, sort of. I think actually Construction 2 might be a little bit better than Improved Machinery Tools right at this moment. Simply th so that our construction speed goes up. So let's go ahead and do this. Oh, three civilian factories. We do need to produce more military factories. We have a little bit more infrastructure in these provinces now, so let's do that. That should be all right. 18 per day, so that's coming up nicely. 90 days for mechanical computing. Grand battle plan is taking an enormous amount of time, but that's sort of to be expected. So I wonder whether we should oh it's only no it works sick i don't think we need engineer regiments although they would help us to dig in very nicely 
Let's actually disband you so that we do get some equipment. And we can recruit more people at the same time. You have a high equipment priority as well, so you should be getting the stuff that, as we are producing these 20 units per day, <coughs> this is where that should be flowing. Which I think is is okay. Decisions available. Hmm. Yeah, solidify control. More stability would be appreciated, but I don't think... I don't think it's something that we need right now. Okay, so let's leave it as as uh, leave it there. Foreign direct investment. We'll get rid of the factory output malice. So that is extremely important. How is that affecting us right now? We are actually getting a positive modifier of plus seventeen percent here. So that's nice. But yeah, standoff in America. Here we go. So, ooh, democratically elected president. Uh, Yui Long fled to the city of New Orleans after being forcibly after being forcibly removed from his position by General Douglas MacArthur. From New Orleans, Long supporters have declared MacArthur's government illegitimate. As of the northern supporters of syndicalist Jack Reed, based in Chicago, and the Pacific government under the leadership of Frank Merriam. I don't know this guy. All have been uh, given a deadline by General MacArthur of 30 days to either stand down or face arrest and execution. And you can see the United States have splintered into how many factions? Four. So we've got the American Union state down here, which seems to be Yui Long. Not really sure what this guy is doing. Authorian Democrat. Then we've got the uh, General MacArthur down here. Military Hunter. We've got the Democratic Party on the uh, West Coast, and then we've got the syndicalists, so the communists, sort of communists, um, up over there. And I very much expect these guys to be descending into civil war, at least among some of these factions. It's interesting to see that the United States of America itself is sort of in the middle over here, so everyone else is separated. Only these guys um, do get some benefit. Let's do more infrastructure investments and let's basically have a look at how much we are producing now. 24, so we are, I think there was 20 when we last looked at it. So that's a very nice development over here, but of course still hugely insufficient. Still 500 days of production. More than a year. Peace deal. So Afghanistan is fully at peace now? Yes. No changes really. Dominion of India I think is Going in, growing a little bit. And here we go. United States have declared war on the Pacific States. And the American Union State. And the Syndicalists. And the Syndicalists on the Union State. And the Union State on the United States. And the Syndicalists on the United States. Is anyone missing? No. I think it's a free for all, all against all. And the United States of America, so the military junta by MacArthur is sort of wedged in the middle. Interesting. To those not in the know, it seems like the crisis in the United States came out of nowhere, but experts agree that it, it that this was a civil war years in making. Since the collapse of the New York Stock Exchange in 1925, oh, so that did happen, the economy of the United States has been sluggish and mired in deep recession. Now the United States has collapsed into an all-out civil war between the supporters of the federal government, the combined syndicalists of America, the right-wing American Union state, and the remnants of a democratic rule in the Pacific States of America. Volunteers are pouring in from around the world to support one faction or another, with some characterizing the bitter illogical conflict as simply part of a wider global clash in ideas. Okay, Liberia being the odd one out there. So yeah, but that is interesting and we are gonna watch that. So there are immediately, there's immediately a little bit of conflict between the syndicalists here around Washington in the East Coast. This of course is uh, for the Americans. This is the industrial uh, homeland. There is a naval conflict as well. Russia still locked in, in, in war against the syndicalists. And this is one of the reasons why in this mod, I'm not particularly keen on playing the, I was not particularly playing, uh, keen on playing the communists over here. Because I think they have a little bit of a lot of support worldwide. You've got America, you uh, sorry Britain, you've got France. You maybe sort of sometimes get Russia, um, and in the United States as well. And once you combine that 
Once you have as allies uh, the United Kingdom, France, Russia and the United States, um, it sort of doesn't get too exciting from there, I think. Right, um, let's go for more industrial research. Mechanical computing is also going to come online fairly soon. Ooh. Sail of Cylon? Cy Cy Cylon? Welcome home. Have come to us offering us the sale of Salon. While it would be obviously cost us to a sizable amount of money, having the island once more would be greatly strengthen our position in the Indian Ocean. Welcome home. What do we get? What's a lot of money? There's no money in this game. Non-aggression pact with German Empire. Very negative opinion with the other guys. I want to buy it. I've never had that. I've, I've made a little test game. I don't know uh, what happened there. So come on. We are going to get an event here. Transfer. Political power. Political power. No, no, no. No, no. Of course it does need to be part of our nation itself. So what have we got over here? We've got absolutely no factories. But we have an enormous amount of rubber. Are we getting any rubber from trade? Uh, or are we any getting civilian factories from trading away our rubber is the question. Interesting that they decided to sell that to us. I've never really seen that. Right, so we could go for the industrial concern. Wouldn't be the worst. Otherwise, Chief of Staff, Chief of Army would be interesting. I don't think we have a theorist. Ship designer and aircraft design and navy and aircraft and, and air force are pretty much irrelevant to us. Ooh, we could go for partial mobilization as well. I think that's probably the best we can do. Consumer goods factories, 25%. And military factory construction speed goes up by 20%. So yes, we are going to do that. Great. I've never had that. Ooh, fall of Washington. Syndicalist militias. Welcome to World's Washington. And more importantly, that has cut off the United States from over here. And you can see a lot of pockets for the United States now. Where's your actual, your actual capital now? Can't really see that. You must have a capital, right? No? No, doesn't look like you have. International avant-garde, that's not quite as important. Alright. 1937 going on 1938. I think the excavation is that important to us. Maintenance artillery. I think these are the ones that we have still in 1936. But the most important one... Let's do the maintenance company, and the reason for that is the equipment equipment capture ratio. Um, since our industrial base is so low, I think we'll need to try and capture a little bit of equipment from some other places. We're gonna of course always have some factories, but not all of them at the same time. Russia, this, this here is so dangerous. If you are getting cut off here, all of the forces down here will be out of supply. We have insufficient resources. Only a little bit of steel though, so that's not quite as bad. We're not getting that many factories from trade, even though we are producing all of this rubber now. And that's extremely nice, but not critical. Also, a little bit more manpower doesn't hurt. It's not extremely useful. You know, producing 30 per day, lack of resources is only one percent drawdown so that's not quite as important second international no that's ooh, damn it I missed an event there because it did interfere you know China seems to be doing well I think ah but they have lost Saigon still these guys up here will be crushed and then they'll be able to do something down there right I don't think that the United States of America, the military junta, is going to go far here. It's simply too wedged in, in between things. There we go. The railroad has now been fully constructed and we are going to go into military, expand military industry. That's going to give us four more military factories. We currently only have nine, so that's an enormous boost there. 
and more political power. That's always appreciated. And you know what? We're going to add the industrial concern over here so that we have a little bit more research speed and things for military industry. But afterwards, we will need to uh, concentrate on the army because it is 1937 and we should have a look at what our other guys are doing. Fortify the princely border. That doesn't look too good because that means you have started to prepare for the final struggle. You haven't you haven't started with the continuation of preparations yet. So that gives you a lot of political power. But you are building forts in at the border with us. How about you here? You are actually preparing for the final showdown right now. Yeah, so we do need to be prepared for war soon. And we're still missing 10,000 infantry equipment just for what li little forces we actually currently have. So um, that's that's uh, a problem. But a great pact. Nicaragua has declared war on Honduras. Not the most important one, but another faction in the Balkans. That's certainly going to lead to war at some point. Dutch elections. Yeah, the United States is crushed there. Something happening in our north. Oh, but they have regained washing, so that's interesting. Peru on Ecuador. Yeah, you can see, see things are starting to escalate um, quite quickly over here. Oh, interestingly enough, where did you get that support from? You're going to be crushed over there. Yeah. What do we know about them? We do know they have about... 50? 56 to 100. Yeah, I think the syndicalists are gonna are gonna roll through over here. United States of America are being crushed. On the other hand, the Pacific states seem to be doing really well for themselves. 20, yeah, but you don't really have the power, I think. Not sure where that came from. Probably just a remnant. Problem development. How how deeply into into war has has South America descended? So we've got Chile fighting Argentina. We've got Argentina fighting also the Patagonist workers front down there. We've got Peru fighting Ecuador, and we had I think Nicaragua fighting Honduras. No, Guatemala. Am I mistaken? Someone else was fighting. Paraguay on Argentina. So yeah, there's there's a big war down there. Still New Zealand and Australia sort of uh, being locked in a standoff, uh, in, a, in a face of. Russia still advancing very slowly, if anywhere. You can't have that many divisions left, can you? Still maybe up to 90. But yeah, I think you're being destroyed down here as well. Yeah, there you go. This one is going to be destroyed. And you cannot maintain this line if there's no support line. So you guys will be out of supply. Improved machinery tools. Nice. It is 1937. Don't really need to do conversions. All of this is too far down the line. Yeah, let's go for radio. It's a crucial technology if we want to win any war. Wait, what? Oh, no, okay, you were just... I thought you would be suffering from some... What are you guys doing? Are you training up? Yes, you are. I'm concerned. Expand military industry. Lovely. Very, very good. Um, and we're going to do that right again so that we get another four factories um, because it's super important for us to be building up those, those stockpiles. And we are getting more here. So 40 per day. That's pretty lovely. And uh, we do need a little bit more steel. So let's do ask the Germans. Are we fine with being four short? Minus 2%. Yeah, I think that's okay. Because that does allow us to build things up a little bit faster. Where have we got good infrastructure? Only 30% down there. Yeah. Alright. 
Research, all of this is going fairly well. How do we look in terms of logistics? We do have a little bit of artillery left. We have some support artillery, so you are using 12. We have, so we can do at least five more. And I completely forgot how many you were. Yeah, but this still works, so that's fine. You are still... You don't have enough power there. Let's go ahead and disband three more guys over here. Simply so we start getting some supplies over here and start the training process. And that should be okay. Great. Syndicalism spreads to Burma. That's not good news. Um, Zambia declared war on someone. A war in East Africa? Jesus. What's going on in Africa? All of these guys fighting. So Burma um, being syndicalist means these guys will probably be um, allied. What are you doing? You are prepare the northern border. That's good. So you are facing off against these guys over here, against the Dominion of India. Whereas you guys are... you only fortified the border so far. Can I actually see that? Collapse of Middle Africa, yeah. So obviously big, yeah. Lots of forts over here. Not too worrisome. Yeah. Union of Burma has joined up with these guys, so... Big threat to us, but all in all still fine. Uh, let's take a brief look here. So Syndicalists and American Union State are fighting. Not really sure who's going to win. I think the Syndicalists are in a slightly better position because they also can advance onto New York City and they do have a, a certain industrial base over here. Um, on the other hand, uh, the American Union State doesn't need to focus on anything else much except for maybe the Pacific States. We don't know. Certainly interesting to watch. Interesting to see that Russia only basically fights over this, this southern proportion here. Um, on the other hand, they are... Oh! Are you actually in war against Japan? Interesting. So Japan has probably sort of annexed Transamur here. Transamur is... is it? Are you Puppet? Yes, you are Puppet of Japan. And we have got a conflict over here, which is actually sort of historical, of, of, although of course it did happen more or less down here as Japan was expanding. In Indo Chinese Union, still not quite pushing back the Germans as much as I would have thought over here. And they have established themselves around Saigon, so yeah, not much, not that much happening here. This still is interesting to see. Are you actually in war against. Um, is fighting a defensive war against whom? Australia, yeah. So your forces might be away. That might be why you are preparing a push over there. Although you could just as well just fortify. I don't know. We'll see. We'll have to see about that. Right. But that being said, I think this is a very good place to put in a cut to our episode. Uh, do let me know what you think about the uh, the way over here. Do we want to go a little bit more authoritarian or a little bit more democratic? Um, and do let me know what you think about this here. I think I would like, I think the cavalry would be lovely. Um, do we need to switch to a more aggressive stance and, and take on our competitors here on the Indian subcontinent? I don't know. We're going to see you next time. See you guys. Bye bye.